you're always going to feel like you need 10 CPAs and 10 financial advisors and 30 insurance agents. And before you know it, like if you become everything to everyone, you become nothing to no one. And the more you stay that laser, have one CPA, one financial advisor, one family will attorney, one insurance agent, go a mile deep and an inch wide with them. And they will open up the doors to every other CPA that you want to open up to. They will open up the doors to every other financial advisor that you want to open up to, family will attorney, insurance agents. Hey guys, Wally Alibieri. All right, so what is 24-7 mindset? Most times when you hear 24-7, you're thinking what? 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just grinding, hustling. You know, I learned over time a 24 year career in mortgage and multiple other businesses that I own is unfortunately, you'll get burnt out. I became an absent father, I became an absent husband, and I became a poor business leader because I was trying to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, trying to build a business, maintain a business. When I learned how to work smarter, not just harder, by doing things the best way it could be done, instead of just simply doing my best, I learned how to work only 24 hours a week, seven months a year, while I got paid from the business residually, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can do the same. Welcome to the show. All right, man. Dude, I love that smile. You're excited, excited to, to get a chance to spend some time with you. Uh, likewise, I'm very excited about it. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, tell me a little bit about who is Robbie and how long you kind of been in the business and a little bit about your world. Uh, so, originally, I was born and raised in Beirut. And yep. uh, I lived through the civil war of Lebanon. At the age of 21, I got really tired of it. Went to the embassy, applied for a visa to come to the U.S. It was a Tuesday in June uh, 2020, 2001. Okay. They granted my visa. They told me, come back tomorrow, pick up your passport. Wednesday night, I was in the airplane coming <laughs> to Houston. I had no plans. I had no money. I had no idea <laughs> what I'm getting myself into. I just wanted to leave a war zone, basically, and, yeah. and look for a better opportunity. Um, I was here for about three years before I landed into the mortgage world. I stumbled into it by uh, meeting a couple of loan officers. They told me, hey, it's a good business to get into. The world, the world of mortgage was new to me. It didn't okay. exist in Lebanon back then. Uh, so it was an interesting uh, eye-opener. Uh, yeah. I noticed it's a lot of algebra, a lot of public relations, and I love both of them. And this is what got me into it back in the days. So I started, uh, this month will be 20 years. So 20 years ago, wow. and uh, I, I started my business working with the Arabic community, because that's the language I speak. It was easier for yeah. me to break the ice. And um, I did a lot of fast and easy loans. The community in general, they do a lot. Most of them are self-employed. Yep. So it was an easier loan for me to do until 2009 when uh, we had to start looking into tax returns and looking at a lot of details. This is when I had a kind of like freak out moment and I started diversifying my business and where it's coming from. And uh, this is how I kind of like uh, went through the wave of 2008, 2009 and continued from there. So I guess the first question is what made you choose Houston over anywhere else? Um, <laughs> by luck, uh, I met someone at a coffee shop that his brother lived in Houston. I did not know these people. Okay. <laughs> it's a pure luck. <laughs> Wow, And I say wow. good luck because um, real estate has been really a, a thriving in Texas in general yeah. and in Houston. So it was a good thing that I chose it. It's too funny. Um, I, I came to the States when I was like three years old. No, I think oh. it was like four years old. I started kindergarten here in, in, in Dallas, so I'm not too far away from you. But I was born in Alexandria, Egypt. So I grew up Arabic. Um, I grew up speaking Arabic. So very, very fun. Yeah. And the Egyptian or the Lebanese world, you don't really, um, uh, interest is, interest is frowned upon. 
Um, so the, um, the industry that we both picked is definitely very different than probably what our parents would have picked for sure. Yeah. And, uh, I, I'm guessing you go through the same experience, but not a lot of Arabs are in the mortgage industry. No. Yeah. No, but uh, it's, it's neat to see, you know, what I admire, what I admire about your business and one of the reasons why I wanted to interview you is, you know, the majority of the mortgage world, they're more of a, unfortunately, more of a turn and burn, you know, realtor, realtors, 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 open houses, open houses, open houses, leads, leads, leads. And when you joined the Six Lane Highway Academy, I can tell that you are different from how you're asking your questions. And, and once I heard that, you, if I remember correctly, weren't you, you said 47% of your business comes from your past clients? Yeah, I, I can uh, open up my navigator, but it's around that, correct? Yeah, that's absolutely unheard of, uh, which is super inspiring to hear because it was such a great fit with 24-7 Mindset, the Six Lane Highway, and what you do currently. But let's start with, how did you hear about 24-7 Mindset? How did you hear about me or the Academy or any of that? How did all this start for you? Uh, so on a weekly basis, I listen to the Mortgage Coach community yep. videos. And your video came up, uh, I want to say in 2020, 2019, when you were talking about uh, working a lot with financial advisors. And it's something that I've been uh, trying to break into. Uh, so since then, I've been following some of your videos. And then I noticed uh, you had a big announcement. You were, I couldn't understand if you were exiting the industry or not at that time. But um, uh, I noticed that you're starting your coaching business. Yeah. Um, I ended my coaching contract with Building Champions after six years. And I felt like I need something different. Uh, so I approached your team, hoping I can do one-on-one, -on -one, to be honest. And they told me one-on-one uh, -on -one is not available, and this is the uh, what's available. So far, I like it. I like the accountability. And uh, I, I think I still would like a one-on-one -on -one eventually, but uh, accountability is uh, fuel for my engine. Well, we're uh, we're actually launching one-on-one -on -one coaching here next month. So, um, yeah, there's a morning affirmation that I've told myself the last 11 years, and it's Rome was not built in a day. However, it was built day after day after day after day after day. Keep building, Wally. So, you know, I've, I've got these huge ambitions and dreams for what 24-7 mindset can become. But you've got to build the foundation, then you build the first floor, then you build the second floor, then you build the third floor. It's not like I can build the, the penthouse before I've built the foundation. So I appreciate your patience. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get an email out to you about the one-on-one -on -one coaching, though. Well, but awesome. What was it about how have you struggled previously trying to build the relationships with the financial advisors and then now – what it, how has it kind of closed the gap where you're able to to make that connection and, and make that move? I'm still not there. Um, I built a relationship with a couple of them. I love the clients that I get from them. Uh, I love it when they are introducing me to other people on their uh, in their team. Um, it's a conversation that is very easy for me. Um, when people talk to me, they tell me you brand yourself as a financial advisor. So this is why I'm like mentally I'm I'm all there. Um, yeah. it, it's just uh, maybe accountability, maybe uh, knowing the right uh, strat strategies behind it. Uh, because I had a few attempts where I'm like reaching out to new to me financial advisors, and um, I, I cannot take it to that level where I have with the current uh, advisors that I work with because they see the value of the mortgage coach and the analysis and um they they want their clients to ask me the mortgage questions they don't want to be involved and they tell them this is why i'm introducing you to Drabi because of his knowledge and so um, i'm still struggling <laughs> no, <it's good. laughs> the struggle is I, I think great. i think struggle is great because it builds character so uh, as yeah. you keep going down that path um what does remember that old um Albert Einstein quote that he figured out a hundred and one, a thousand and one ways not how to build a light bulb. 
and his thousand and second time he finally learned learn how to build, light the light bulb. So we've got to figure out how to not do something in business before we can learn how to do something in business. So one thing that's really helped me a ton is figuring out what these financial advisors want or need that I've got access to that I can help provide value to. For example, the meeting right before this one was a financial advisor. He's actually the number one financial advisor in Texas. He's with Northwestern Mutual. He's, uh, I'm here in Dallas. There's a city called Addison, about 15 minutes away from me. And he's got 131 ad advisors underneath him at, 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 his, at his brokerage. And, and I said, hey, what, what do you feel like your biggest number one struggle in your business is today? He goes, my number one biggest struggle is providing opportunities for my advisors for them to reach their goals. I said, well, tell me a little bit more about that. And it talked about how there's a shortage of referral partners that they that they can get access to. There's a shortage of there's only so many CPAs to go around. There's so many only so many family will attorneys go around. There is only so many mortgage lenders to go around. So he and I got together and I said, hey, why don't we do this? I'm going to have a speaker here in Dallas come speak. He's going to be teaching about entrepreneurship. He's going to talk about business building. And what's going to be great about that is it's um, I'm gonna, the audience. It's for 24-7 Mindset. But the audience for the live event is going to be CPAs, financial advisors, family will attorneys, insurance agents, loan officers, and real estate agents. Does that sound maybe like the six-lane highway to you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, that's now they're going to be the audience. And I said, hey, what, how can I, how do you think we should build a networking referral machine back and forth that this person that's sitting at the table as a financial advisor refers business to this person over here, it's a CPA and building a networking group within it. He absolutely loved the idea. And now he's getting his advisors to show up. Well, I had the same meeting last Thursday with a CPA firm that had about 65 different uh, CPA accountants underneath them, uh, personal accounts, not corporate accounts. Then next Tuesday, uh, Tuesday of next week, I'm having the same meeting with an attorney firm. So what I've realized, Robbie, is I've got a network that has access to other networks that these referral sources, these financial advisors want access to. Um, if you realize in, in business that the number one for us in mortgage, the number one biggest referral partner we could have is a realtor. That's majority of, uh, of the biggest referral sources we could have is, is uh, we, a target audience is realtors. Now, the number one biggest referral partner for a financial advisor is a CPA. So if you can give a financial advisor a referral to a CPA, they're on absolutely cloud nine. Mm. So if you... Number one priority is to refer clients to your current financial advisors. Number two priority is refer other professionals to your financial advisors to gain relationships. Then now, you, now you're feeding them once with those referrals from your past clients. And now that you were feeding them, or feeding, the, feeding them for a lifetime of refer, other referral partners that they can, re, they can receive business from. And they remember the person that put food in their mouth is you. And then that's where that relationship will really evolve. I explain that well. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I talked, I talked a lot there. Give me some feedback on what you feel you got out of that or what questions you have. Um, I don't have questions. It's very kind of like uh, obvious. It's uh, uh, the unknown that we know, but we forget about, right? Um, finding the needs and then bringing the solution to it. Um, my my biggest challenge used to be, and I'm working on that, is feeding them. Because I um, I did reach out to many of them in the past, and I'm like, hey, I'll, I'll, I'm looking for a good financial advisor in the city of Austin. Because I yep. was thinking, okay, I uh, I have a big presence in the Arabic community in Houston, and I'm trying to duplicate that in Houston and in Austin and Dallas, San Antonio. Uh, so my first thought is I need to have uh, partners. So I reach out to financial advisors in Austin at that time. This is probably three years ago. 
And um, my approach is I need people. So when I refer you, when I, ref when I refer someone to a, uh, to a financial advisor, I want to know you will take care of them. So there were a few that are on board because they someone is telling them, I want to give you business. And I also should represent to them the analysis that we do with the mortgage coach. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have the leads to them. And this is where I got stuck. I think uh, I paused and I stopped and I didn't go back to it. Uh, but the uh, calls that I'm making right now to do the escrow analysis, and this is what I'm calling them, but then I'm going through a lot of different questions, is helping me generate leads. And from calling, uh, talking to my financial advisor that I do business with, I realized I don't need to send them 20 leads a month. If, I, if they get one lead per month, I'm a higher lead source for them. Mm -hmm. And this is where the connection starts. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I think also just don't make the same mistake that I made. And I, I got fired by a financial advisor once. Um, his name is Austin. He's here in Dallas, though. And now we're still good friends. We actually played golf like three weeks ago. But he um, he took me to lunch one day and he goes, hey, Wally, you know, I just wanted, thanks for coming to lunch. And I've been referring him probably 15, 20 referrals. So I think he's going to celebrate me at lunch. And he goes, hey, this is going to be our last lunch together, but I'm parting ways. Um, please stop referring me your clients. And, um, you know, the, the, you know, uh, hopefully we can stay friends. I'm like, whoa, 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 time out. Like, what did I do? I've sent you like 15 referrals. And he goes, that's the problem, Wally. You're not listening. And I said, well, look, I'm listening now and I don't like what I'm hearing. So tell me where I went wrong. And his response was, I've told you, I work with high net worth clients. What that means is I only work with clients over a million dollars or more of assets under management. And you keep referring me to these clients that have $50,000 to invest, $100,000 to invest, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars to invest. Um, but at the end of the day, they are not, um, they are not the type of clients that my team can service nor is it the niche that I've created, that I've worked really hard to build myself. So your referrals are clogging up my system. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. And he goes, when he said, you're not listening, I was focused so much about sending out referrals, sending out referrals, sending out referrals. And I wasn't listening to the fact of what types of referrals he wanted. And he goes, you know, I would trade your 15 referrals that you send me for one high net worth client a month. You send me one high net worth client a month, you have doubled, doubled over a 12 month span more than any other referral source that I have. I mean, chew on that for a second. So if I if I send 12, one, once, one a month, I've doubled, meaning is other referral sources, the most anybody ever refers them is six referrals a year. And so I just went back and I said, okay, you know, I segmented my database out of who's got, you know, their income is a million dollars or more or $500,000 or more and I segmented out and identified who had more assets under management. And I got four referrals for him literally the next month of specifically the type of clients he wanted. Um, and the, the point we're trying to make is as you learn more about your business and you learn more about how you're building it, the, the better listener you become about what their goals are. So you don't have to necessarily refer them a ton of clients. You've got to figure out what type of clients they want to be referred. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I uh, had that conversation with my buddy, financial advisor, and <laughs> he didn't fire me, but he gave me a warning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I learned really fast. Yeah, uh, us loan officers don't listen well. I promise you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I I did this in my business, and this is mainly why I am very selective about the real estate agents I work with, and um, I I measure the conversion ratio on each individual that sends me business. Yeah, I, I don't want to waste my time on leads that don't generate income uh, either. So For sure. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, tell me a little bit about um, what are some takeaways that you have learned from the academy that you've implemented in your business and you've seen positive results from it so other people listening to the podcast show can learn from you? 
Uh, there are a few things that are, as you know, this is only like a three weeks I'm in the program, so I'm still implementing, but um, time management. So I did start by tracking my time nice. today. Um, I do know that I have a lot of red time and it, uh, I think production reflects that. And I'm also uh, implementing, focusing on referring out instead yeah. of receiving referrals. Um, and this is my philosophy in life anyway. So I, I've always wanted to give first before I ask. And I know the impact of when you give, how much you get. Um, the so, other one, go ahead, go ahead. The other one is the how, how I've been using, uh, w how I'm conducting the annual mortgage review uh, appointments, the way I was trying to get people to schedule is by sending them letters by mail which takes hours to do um, uh, my crm will be sending an email and a text message 60 days before their anniversary and i was getting out of 60 uh out, out calling out calls i was getting maybe one or two appointments and uh, it was frustrating because in my head, I'm like, why would someone not take a free analysis to their financial future? <laughs> like, who wouldn't want to do that? Uh, until you mentioned, like, why don't you pick up the phone? And, and uh, I just, uh, again, accountability. Before the call, I called five people, did two appointments already. Uh, so the calls are the calls are resulting in appointments. The appointments yeah. are resulting into giving uh, leads to uh, attorney that do will and also uh, CPA and financial advisor. So this is where I was able to give out. But um, I want to take this opportunity to uh, also send business to other people like an uh, insurance agent as well. Another thing I learned by um, how do we get business from finance, from uh, insurance agents? Mm -hmm. um, I'm still in the process, but the, the thought of how could we partner up with the insurance agent, this insurance agent has been receiving business from me for 10 years, and I know they don't have the business for me. Uh, when I showed him Homebot, he was very interested. Uh, last week, uh, we had some interruption in it, but my goal is to get back to him. I want to kind of like go through the process from A to Z with this one agent before I add more. Yeah. Uh, but those are the giveaways that I learned so far. It's like staying focused and um, I don't want to do activities that maybe later will pay me. I want to do activities that will have a major impact on the financial or all the partners that I have. And then we'll come after that. So one thing I want to encourage you on is success leaves clues and failures leave clues, right? But unfortunately, we look more about our successes of what the clues were and less at our failures, what the clues are. So if you look at what's made you successful is you talked about how um, you focus on the realtor, the realtor relationships, working with who you want to work with because you give out referrals and you want to be selective of who you want to work with. Okay. So right now you've got a laser, which is awesome. That, that I want you to, I want to encourage you to keep doing that more now, but you became a shotgun instead of a laser and you started focusing on a financial advisors in, in Austin. Uh, you just talked about you've got this one insurance agent, but you want to get this get this hammered out and get this process down, and and then from there, you know, so you can go after other insurance agents. What would your world need to look like if you had only one CPA, one financial advisor, one family will attorney, one insurance agent that you focused on, and you went a mile deep and an inch wide with that with the only of those four? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. And it also brings higher value for loyalty because uh, that's something I really live by um, and encourage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah keep, keep that in mind because where I feel sometimes people struggle is they compare their chapter one to my chapter 20. They compare their chapter one and my chapter 20. And it's 
you're always going to feel like you need 10 CPAs and 10 financial advisors and 30 insurance agents. And before you know it, like you, if you become everything to everyone, you become nothing to no one. And the more you bestay that laser, have one CPA, one financial advisor, one family will attorney, one insurance agent, go a mile deep and an inch wide with them. And they will open up the doors to every other CPA that you want to open up to. They will open up the doors to every other financial advisor that you want to open up to, family will attorney, insurance agents. And my advice is build, build that one foundation before you start building this first floor, the second floor, the third floor. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. Plus also, you know, I think good, good thing for co confidence, Remy, is you watching yourself be successful with those four partners, the CPA, financial advisor, family will attorney, insurance agents. Because if you listen to your tone and your pitch, when you talked about the financial advisors in Austin, your, your shoulders started to slash forward. Your body language was felt a little bit defeated. Your tone of your voice was, was lingering off. But when you heard you talk about the realtor relationships, I mean, it was like chest out, you know, you're proud of, you know, being able to be selective. And as you've learned, if you, as you learn this referral system back and forth, you, you'll realize it's, you're going to have more successes if you keep your inner circle small and tight mm -hmm. versus if you're just trying to spread yourself thin to the masses out there. Makes sense. Good. Good. Yeah, yeah. Well, all right. I've got about four more minutes left. What's another question you want to ask me that I can help you with or a struggle that you're having or a win that you want to share that, that I can help you with? Um, I mentioned to you the seven level of communication and the practices that I've been, I've been doing with my database for a long time. Uh, I've been uh, lacking on that for probably three or four years. And my, my thought is, am I missing out if I don't do quarterly events to my database? If I'm making those calls and I'm doing everything else, but I'm not doing the party and the stuff that I was doing before, having lunch with past clients and uh, uh, constant events, what is your thought about it? Um, it, do it doesn't sound like your heart is passionate about doing quarterly events, or am I misunderstanding it? I, I love it. I just uh, haven't done it lately, and it has been uh, four years. I think COVID changed the habit, yeah. and I haven't picked it up since then. Yeah, COVID changed a lot of habits, um, and COVID changed. I mean, candidly, you don't need a financial advisor in Austin if you got a financial advisor in Houston because the huge Houston financial advisor can service clients in Austin. So COVID changed that for sure. Um, but the way I would look at it is there's never going to be anything that can be changed or can replace chest to chest, heart to heart, eyeball to eyeball, touching, feeling, emotionally connecting with another human being. So I, I would definitely encourage the quarterly events. Um, and if you, if it, if it's too much money and too much time commitment to do them quarterly, just do it, you know, once every six months or start just doing it. Hey, I'm going to do one over the next 12 months, then, then a year from now, do two. Then two years from now, do three. And just start building a momentum momentum back. Um, but I, I, I'm a huge fan of face-to-face of, um, -face group meetings, and especially because you're celebrating them. It's a positive experience. And um, it, it's a, I mean, you're so, so, so relational, um, and your business proves it. It's already making you successful. Why would you stop doing it? Makes sense. Okay. Good. What company are you with, by the way? I own my own Robbie's Gee. Mortgage. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. Good for you. So How after you 18 years, I realized if I'm if I'm coaching my clients to become millionaires, uh, they're taking steps, and one of the steps is to buy commercial real estate. Yeah. I need to start doing commercial loans, and Ooh. this is why I, I took that step. So you do apartment complexes, strip centers, so on and so on? Right. Okay. Got it. Um, so I've been in the business 25 years. I started in 1999. My first 24 years was a retail loan officer that worked for a company. Uh, this last year, a little bit less than a year, I, I became, a, became a broker. Um, it's completely different. It is so, so, I don't know if you remember, I don't know if you were, you were previously a retailer or not, but 
um, it, it is a whole different world um, being a broker. Uh, I wouldn't change it for the world and I wouldn't take a step back and go back to retail. No disrespect to retail, but the the low interest rates that we have now being a broker and then also all the massive options that we have now that I would previously not have access to, it just opens up a whole new world. Um, we've done probably three or four commercial deals, uh, commercial lending deals over the last maybe 12 months, but it's not really been a niche that we focused on. Yeah, me either. I haven't even advertised for it, but uh, I get those leads every now and then. Yeah, it's uh, it's a great feeling when you get a referral and you know that you've got a source for it now, where previously you did not have a source for it and you would always have to refer it out. Yeah, I feel like we need to spend a few more hours to uh, <laughs> pick each other's brains, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed this conversation. Well, hey, I've enjoyed it. Uh, by the way, the book behind you right there, High Trust Sales, High Trust Sales, is one mm -hmm. of the best books in history. Uh, yeah. Todd Duncan's an amazing, amazing mentor. He's, he's a, have you read the book 24 seven mindset? Um, uh, chapter seven. Okay. I, mm. I, I reference him nine different times in that book. So Good. he's, he's yeah. yeah high trust. That's a, that's a phenomenal book behind you there. Yeah. I have, uh, I, I, I've been on a uh, wagon to read about four, four books a year and listen yeah. to 22. So I spent a lot of time reading. Okay. Do you ever make it to Dallas, by the way? No, but I would like to. Okay. What I'll do is uh, I'll send you an email. I'm having a 24-7 mindset event here in Dallas, June 19th. Okay. And um, it's, have you ever read the book Rocket Fuel? No, not yet. Have you heard Have you heard of EOS? Entrepreneur? E EOS, the organization? Yeah. So EOS is entrepreneur, entrepreneurial operational systems. Right. So it's for business owners and it helps them scale businesses. There it talks about how there's a visionary and talks about the, how there is a integrator. Right. And when you have that duo combo, it's just a phenomenal mixture. Mm -hmm. um, so the author is become a good friend. His name is Mark Winters. I'm having him speak here in Dallas. So I'll have 150 to 200 CPAs, financial advisors, family will attorneys, insurance agents. Well, I'll do I'll do an event like that once a quarter. But the next one also, if you can't make the June 19th, I'll send you a, a free ticket. But if you can't make that one, the one I'm doing in September is with Michael Mayer, the author of Seven Levels of Communication. Um, Michael and I are good friends. We've known each other for 15 years. Um, he, he's been a great mentor and he's helped me a ton. So uh, awesome. if you if you make it to Dallas, you can definitely come to that event. I will just, I will go just for that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, all right, but well, I'll get those emails out to you. And uh, thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. See you, Robbie. Bye. 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 -bye. So thank you so much for listening today. It means a lot you took time out of your day. I don't take that lightly. Understand very clearly that you're very busy. With that being said, if you want to continue your journey and learn more about 24-7 Mindset, if you're on Facebook, which I'm going to guess you are, then go to 24-7 Mindset on Facebook and join the private community. I do coaching tips on there on a daily basis, but from scripts on there to systems on there, models, and the ability to be able to grow and scale a business while you have a quality of life. Hope to see you there. Thank <laughs> you.